an article from Breaking Defense. The F-35 completed a key combat simulation um, on September 21st, I almost said 21th, known as Runs for Score, which I suspect Rick can enlighten us about. They've had 900 F-35s produced. The program has technically been stuck in its initial operation testing phase for years over delayed com completion of the trials. Um, apparently, this moves it to the next stage. Mm -hmm. It's expected to achieve FRP at the end. It was expected to achieve FRP at the end of 2019. And let's see. The trial results from the trial could show need for retrofits to address possible shortcomings. Uh -huh. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall was asked whether he envisioned such changes being necessary based on JSE results. Kendall, who once described the F-35 production plan as an acquisition malpractice, praised the F-35 in response. <laughs> He's changed wow. his opinion. It's so light year ahead of I wonder how generation. that happened. Yeah. He moved from DOD to USAF. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, strange. I so, know, Rick, right. what does all this mean? Well, I don't know whether you guys are familiar with OTE, but that's operational test and effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And there is a separate organization called OTE in the Department of Defense. And basically, what they do is once there's been sufficient assets produced, they can be tanks, trucks, submarines, whatever, they compare what the device is capable of doing versus what the service had said it needed to do in the operational requirements document in the Air Force. I don't know what the Navy calls it. But the, D, the dot and &E, the director of ot and &E, is a guy who is set up to say, guy or girl, pardon me, that this airplane meets all the requirements, so now we can buy a whole bunch of them. And that's what goes into full rate production. And so when you first start the development program, you have two key miles, well, yeah, I guess you have three. The first is let's start and develop it. The second is decide to go into low rate initial production. And the third is to go into full rate production. And the first one is, uh, kind of a paper pushing exercise to say, you know what you're doing. This, the money is pretty reasonable. God Smith wins and off we go. And then you go through the flight test program. It uh, says you have done what you said you were going to do. It meets the ORD or it meets the specification. And therefore we can buy some of them to actually give them to the guys to go to fly and fight them. And the third rate is what's called ot and &E, Operational Test and Evaluation. And what that means is they go out and they fight a war with an airplane or a tank or a boat or whatever. And the dot and &E guy gets up and says, the guy, girl, gets up and says, yes, this does meet what the service asked for in terms of war fighting capability. And so, therefore, you can buy a bunch of them. So what that said was that the F-35s, I guess, is allowed to go into full rate production because it does meet what the services ask for. I mean, if that's what it said, I'm not, I'm not sure what exactly the situation is. And it's up to that individual to make the recommendation to the Secretary of Defense to say, now I'll tell you a couple of funny stories about that. When we were had the F-22 and we started the development program, the ot and &E guys come pounding down to right pitiful and said, we need a ton of money. And we said, well, what, what for? And said, well, we have to replicate the integrated air defense system of the Eastern European scenario. We said, you what? And basically what they wanted to do was take the Warsaw Pact defense system, air defense system, and build another one out there in Holloman or someplace so they could test the airplane against it. And we said, what? <laughs> <laughs> can you guys go away, please? <laughs> and after a lot of negotiations and saner heads intervened, we said, well, Here's the things we can do, which is some of the stuff they're doing on that, that airplane using simulation, using 
models using uh, captured assets, whatever they're going to use to test against the, the actual airplane is flying. And I su suspect that what they did was come up with a whole bunch of scenarios where a bunch of A's come in and a bunch of C's are doing this and the B's are launching offshore and everybody's going to do it and we're going to do blah, 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 blah. And through simulations and actual running against uh, uh, captured assets or duplicate assets or things like that, they have shown or not, I don't know what the answer was, that it does in fact do what the services had asked it to do. Now in the end, reality lays its head and it says, look, we're a little short here, we're a little short there, but it's still a good airplane and we should do it anyway and then, oh, by the way, all the people that are working on these things need money and they like to have jobs and what have you, so we're going to do it anyway. Now, if it's a real flop, like the A-12, it will get canceled. There's no question about it. But you can't, you can't fight World War III with the airplanes to prove that they can win World War III. It's as simple as that. So you got to use a lot of that stuff. Now, Frank Kendall at one time was in the Department of Defense development part of the business, not in the services part of the business. And I suspect when he said that, he was in that part of the Air, the Department of Defense. And he may or may not have been true. I, I don't know. I never read it. I, I know Frank, but he, when he got the job as the Secretary of the Air Force, he ain't going to turn around and say, well, boy, i got a crummy program here. Let's cancel it. Ain't going to happen. So the fact that that guy said that, I said, that's no human nature. I mean, you're put in the job to make sure you're going to get the product that's been asked for. And if you believe it's the product is good enough now, you'll say that. Why not? So all that stuff that they were talking about is all those simulations and, and, and uh, war gaming and you name it to prove that the services are going to get what they wanted may not be what you need. And that's another story that <laughs> the services really don't know what they're going to do with the airplane when they ask for, it because the situation changes, the airplane does different things. And when pilots get their hands on it, they develop new tactics. And so, the fact that they said in the or the operation requirement document it's got to do a b c d e turns out that yeah a b c is pretty good d we don't need anymore but here's f g h and i that we can do now we're going to do that instead and that's what you guys do in tactics development and so therefore the fact that you say it meets the or may or may not be actually relevant but it is the law and it is a law it's a public law that says this guy this woman this person has to say that this meets what the services ask for or has these following shortcomings that must be remedied or it has these following shortcomings which are acceptable. And until they do that, you can't ramp up production at the, the rate that you want it. Is that good enough? That's amazing. I have nothing to say. Gonky, do you have anything? I mean, I'm just I'm sitting here just... <laughs> no, my head hurts. Uh, I'm, I'm learning. I'll I give you a story. The director of OT, a good friend of mine, he once he was he was talking about the F thirty five C. He was long after he was out of his job, and he said, "You know, Rick, the AVA B has never taken off vertically with a full combat load, and never will, even though it's supposed to." He said, "Now that's a prime example of what the Marines think they need, but they can't have, and make do with what they got." I said, yeah, I know that. I was, I was come in and say, we want this, we want that, we want this. Because the marketeer has been down there buying them beers and telling them, hey, you know, we got this super <laughs> sexy whiz gangy. And if you, you buy our plane, we're going to give you this. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm. And my job all the time was to say, well, yeah, you can have that. Or no, you can't. I mean, it ain't going to happen. I'm sorry. I remember one guy. He had, he had his cockpit display. In his airplane, I'm, I'm not going to mention who it was or which one. In his cockpit display, he had every threat in the Eastern Hemisphere. It was going to 
see them all, identify them all, tell you and route your path so you can get through all these guys and it's going to work perfectly. And the guys, you know, the fangs came out and the drool started going and everybody's like, ah, yeah, we got to have this and we got to have this. I said, it ain't going to happen, guys. Come on. Well, they told me it was. Yeah, right. <laughs> Did you ever buy a car? <laughs> Did you ever listen to the <laughs> Was it really like that? Can you really figure out airplay in your car? <laughs> so, like I said, this, this whole thing of evaluating the airplane is a critical step in the whole development and production of the airplane. And, that, and that's what they're really talking about. 